Hello and welcome back to another future Doc House production. Let's continue our journey on this manuscript here. We are on gram positive cocci. Gram positive cocci. Coxie. Coxie. If you want a copy of my manuscript, find me on Facebook, find me on find me on Instagram and send me a message. I'll send it to you. I'll send a link to you for free. Here we go. Gram positive cocci or cocci. Alright, staff of cocci. Well, we've got staphylococci, we've got a streptococci, okay, and we've got enterococci. Okay, here we go. Staphylococci, enterococci, and streptococci. All right, how are we going to figure out which bacteria is which based off of lab tests? Okay, so this is the mind map or the flow chart to figure that out. Let's start with this. You see that it's coxy. All right, we know it's spherical shaped. Now, the other clue, the clue can be either it's in clusters, they're grouped in clusters, like a grape cluster, or they're grouped in a chain, like a snake. If they're grouped in clusters, or if they're catalase positive, they have this catalase enzyme positive, then we know it's staphylococci. If it is grouped in a chain or catalase negative, does not have this enzyme, does not have catalase, then it's gonna be streptococci. All right, let's start with staphylococci. Now we know it's here. If another test shows that the bacteria is coagulase, coagulase positive, which means it has coagulase, then the only choice is staph aureus, staph aureus. Now, if it is coagulase negative, you'll have two choices. It's either S. epidermidis or S. saprophyticus. So that's staphylococci for you. Simple. If you get a board exam question on uh, staph bacteria, you should not get it wrong. Strep, on the other hand, is a little bit more tricky. Here we go, let's start with, we know it's, there. We know it's strep. Now, we decide. What type of hemolysis does it the, uh, happens, okay? And is it alpha, beta, or, or gamma hemolysis, okay? If it's beta hemolysis, which is complete hemolysis uh, when grown on, uh, on blood agar, then you have to ask the, uh, the question, is it bactricin sensitive or not? Bactricin being an antibiotic. If it is sensitive to this antibiotic positive, the only choice is group A streptococci, which is strep piogenes, piogenes, piogenes. If it is not sensitive to this antibiotic or negative, it can only be strep agalactiae, okay, or group B streptococcus. All right, now let's take a look here. Now let's say we, it, it could be either A alpha, beta, or gamma hemolysis, right? There's a two more tests. That's why I leave these here. Bioescaline agar, it's either bioescaline positive or bioescaline negative. If it's bioescaline positive and, and uh, one of these hemolysis, if it's, def, if it's gamma hemolysis, it's definitely a group D streptococcus. Then you have to ask yourself, does it grow in 6.5% sodium chloride? If it grows in 6.5% sodium chloride, it's most likely an enterococci, okay? And uh, the two choices would be E. fecalis or E. facium. All right, if it's not or negative, it does not grow in 6.5 sodium chloride, then it's only S. bovis. The only choice can be S. bovis, strep bovis. Finally, if it's bioescaline agar negative and it's alpha, which is partial hemolysis, then these are your choices here. Uh, you must ask yourself, is it bio, is the biosolubility uh, or optogen sensitivity, okay? And I miss, uh, I forgot to put this, but we can continue. If it's bio, uh, both of these, if it's positive, the only choice in big letters is S pneumonia, okay? S pneumonia. If it's negative, then you've got the viridin streptococci, which 
doesn't show up on board exams that often, but they will throw it in there just to throw you off. Strep mutans and strep sanguis. Okay, these are the Virden streptococci. So that's the overall, overall view of these two bacteria family, these two family of bacteria. Obviously there's a lot of bacteria. And that's how you figure out which bacteria they're talking about in the vignette based off of the lab results. All right, if you like this video and you want more of these videos, please click subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day. Congratulations, you are a medical student. One day, you will be a qualified doctor and your home will be a hospital or a clinic. But for now, your journey begins in the lecture hall. You will listen to countless hours of lectures and spend evening after evening in the library reading page after page of medical theory. And guess what? This is the easy part. The hardest part is retaining your medical knowledge so it's there when you need it. For example, examinations. But don't worry, we are here to help. Meet Jeff. Jeff is a good student. He goes to all his lectures. He says no to parties so he can stay late in the library. But when it's time to take the exams, Jeff freezes. The knowledge that he spent so long learning just isn't there anymore. Now meet Jennifer. Like Jeff, she is a good student. But instead of just reading textbooks late into the night, Jennifer uses technology to help her study. She also watches lectures on YouTube and practices her knowledge with QP, a medical quiz app and online platform. Jennifer likes QP because it has 10,000 practice questions covering her entire medical course. This means she can practice her medical knowledge from anywhere and in a way that actually prepares her for the exams. Because she is practicing with exam-style questions, when she takes real exams, she'll be ready. Don't be a Jeff. Begin your 7-day free trial with QP today.